Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim, back with another episode of The Sim Squad. Hi. Today I have some new perfumes for you guys. Just a few, just five. I try to stick to five now when I'm doing new perfumes because I have a lot to talk about and I don't want you guys to get bored, you know. Plus, this is like kind of my first impressions because I've had these perfumes for between like a week to one month, which is like not really a lot. So, but it was just like very intriguing. These perfumes have been like going viral and I just wanted to smell them, compare them. I have other perfumes from the same brand, but I need the OG perfumes. So I'm, I'm trying to get these samples, right? From people who sell like sample sizes, 3 ml, 10 ml, depending on like which perfume I'm ordering. They're still quite pricey because most of them are niche, but you know what? I can still afford to buy uh, perfumes so I can do a direct comparison. I am planning to get like a proper like discovery sets of all big brands but then perfumes are releasing at such quick rate that I can't really have all of them so I have to rely on these uh, sample uh, providers to get them for you. So the first one, let me not like waste time, the first one is something that was on my radar for a long time. The original of this one, I had hated it but now, let's see, let me not spoil it. So this is the Tuskeen by Paris Connor. It's called the Caramel Cascade. So if you guys know, I had the original Tuskeen, which I hated. There's a Tuskeen Marina version, which I am not going to bother. <laughs> and then they released the Tuskeen Caramel Cascade, which is like a completely different um, perfume DNA, like a completely different genre. So the box is kind of cute because it has this uh, glittery thing going on. It's a normal cardboard box, but um, for the price of the perfume, I'm not complaining at all. If I'm not mistaken, this perfume is like $20. It's not less you know and the bottle is again it's just like the Tuskeen bottle but it is this nice caramel it gives you the vibe of coffee and caramel it actually gives you more of a cappuccino vibe but like still like the feeling of this bottle is the same just like the Tuskeen if you remember I was like the whole time you know and the cap is also like pretty cute I like these bottles they're very like basic but they look nice on the vanity it's not nothing obnoxious or weird or something you know now this is like supposed to be the dupe of Bianco Latte by Giordan Giordani di Toscana. <laughs> Let me. So I got the samples. By the way, if you are in UAE, you can get the samples from Ash Perfumes. That's their name. I'm gonna put their link. I'm not affiliated with them, by the way. So more than smelling this perfume, I was like more interested in the Bianco Latte. And you know what? Now I want the Bianco Latte full bottle. <laughs> like. <laughs> I hate it when I like like perfumes which are like super expensive. I'm like now what am I gonna do? Now I'm gonna keep the Tuskeen on this side. I'm gonna keep everything to do with Bianco Latte on this side. So notes, the perfume strip, everything either sides. Yeah. Now just to do a spoiler, they smell nothing alike. They're in the same family but no way this is a dupe for Bianco Latte. There's like no comparison at all between the two. Now Bianco Latte immediately became a love for me. I like it so much. On the skin, it smells much better than the blotter or your clothes or anything. As a matter of fact, any gourmand fragrances, guys, I feel it just smells better on your own skin because it then truly feels like gourmandy. And then you also feel, you know, the heat of your body kind of like, like makes it like evaporate and just makes it smell so much better. Bianco Latte is an obsession. If you like Cheriosa 62, if you like, uh, what was the other one? Devotion by uh, uh, Dolce Gabbana. You're going to like this one. Now, I'm not going to speak too much about the Bianco Latte because I'll do a separate video in the Western Wednesdays, which I've not been filming at all. I'll do it separately, but I will put the notes over here in comparison to your Tuskeen, right? Once I spray the Tuskeen. Now, how does Tuskeen start? I, by the way, when I bought it, I sprayed out like a lot from this, right? I shook it. I did everything. I sprayed it on my skin. I sprayed it on my clothes. All that jazz. Now the top notes for Caramel Cascade is caramel and milk in the top notes, half notes of tonka bean and honey, and the base notes of vanilla, musk and amber. Very gourmand notes. Very, very gourmand notes. Okay, so in the beginning, okay, you need to give this perfume, let's say 30 minutes. After that, it starts developing more on your skin. Like in the beginning, there's this weird licorice kind of scent, which I really don't like. It almost smells like rice, you know, like when you open like a bag of rice and you put your nose to it. 
So it smells like all those gourmand notes that I told you, but those gourmand notes are overshadowed with that rice smell, you know? And that kind of like that licorice stick that you eat, you know how it tastes? You know, it, it kind of gives me that vibe. So I don't know if they've actually put licorice in this or not, but side by side, comparing this to this, in the dry down, it does smell like the Bianco Latte, but the opening, the middle notes are nothing like Bianco Latte. I'm gonna emphasize and underline before people come for me. They are the same DNA. It's the same genre. It is the same caramel, milk, tonka, vanilla. Think of these four. Same, but the composition, the way it is created, the way it's mixed. This one from the get-go, you smell gourmandy, you smell very caramelly, very thick, very uh, like edible. Like immediately you want to take a bite into this perfume. Like I want to drink this perfume. It smells like a freaking you know, caramel vanilla milkshake. It's so beautiful. Yeah, caramel vanilla milkshake would probably be the right note description for this. If I just want to describe it in layman's terms, right? This on the other hand does go to that dry down, but that initial rice licorice smell doesn't like it takes like 30 freaking minutes for it to change. Plus the projection, the um, intensity, not even the longevity, the intensity of it is so poor. It's like maybe half a feet yeah and you really have to even if it's on your skin you really have to put your nose to it now tell i'm telling you like when you take a bath for example like how i tried it i took a bath everywhere i was like you know like going mental i was like let me like smell this perfume and then i was like because you know it was like that licorice smell just like did not do it for me that smell of rice i was like uh uh uh, uh. smell like rice water you know when you soak your rice and that thing just like really made me gag but then after like 30 minutes or so i was watching tv i forgot that i wore this perfume i got a little anosmic as well to that horrible opening note of it but then the perfume started smelling so good and that's when i realized i'm like you know what this perfume needs to sit for three months at least before i can start using it i know this perfume will develop i know this perfume will become good because even on my skin, when it was oxidizing, when it was mixing with the my skin chemistry, with the atmosphere, everything, it just became so delicious. And that's when I realized, you know what? The dry down, very, very similar. It's just that Bianco Latte smells a little bit more, let's just say posh, and this smells like convenience store. <laughs> but come on, the price is like that as well. This is like posh and this is like convenience store, right? So I'm not really gonna like, bully this perfume too much because i do like it i just have to like get used to that initial licorice that rice kind of smell which i don't know if other people are getting or not but my bottle is just like that but because this is my initial impression so let's give it a rest let's chill out and i'll come back to this perfume as of now i think it is worth giving it a shot right if you can smell it somewhere please go and smell it and yes put it on your skin and let it like sit and then smell it after 30 minutes or so and that's when you'll realize what the potential of this perfume is. I'm saying potential because it still has a long way to go. Currently, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. It's a very bad score, I know. 6 out of 10 is a bad score for a perfume which I was liking after 30 minutes. But I cannot tolerate the opening. Anyhow, this is going nowhere. It's going to, it's going to stay in my collection. I'll use it after 3 months. I'm going to keep spraying it in between. But after 3 months, I'm going to come back with a proper review for you guys. So, for now... This is like my initial thoughts for it. There's no Middle Eastern uh, vibe in this at all. Um, longevity, again, like maybe like two hours. That's what I felt. I was like, you know, it's so mild. Like it just stays as a skin scent. You know, Cheriosa 62, that performs like a lot more. Like that kind of body mist will perform much, much more than this. But I'm telling you, this is a fresh batch. It's March 2023. March 2024. Like what do you expect? You know, it's, it's a brand new perfume. So let's like, you know, I wish they would not do this. I wish they would not release the perfume so quickly without macerating it, you know. So let it sit. And I think this perfume has like huge potentials. I'm not going to allocate any celebrities to the perfumes today because there's no way that I can so quickly pass judgments on this and decide what, which perfume smells like which celebrity. The Bianco Latte on the other hand. I've become obsessed with it. Like I can't wait to get my full bottle. And I'm so happy because this this ash perfumes they offer 3 ml and 10 ml i'm so happy i got the 10 ml so at least i can like you know wear it for now till i can afford the full bottle 
So that was your first one. I'm gonna finish the um, Paris Garden perfume. So just slipped out of my mind. Uh, the next one is Kissa. Now Kissa, I know it has a pink one, the blue one, and then they have this recent one which is called Delicious. 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 <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> I was trying to be fancy. So the bottle is like, it's pretty. Like very typical uh, Paris Corner boxes. But as I told you, like with the prices and everything, I will not expect anything more than this from Paris Corner. Because the perfumes are like dirt cheap. Yeah, this one was also around like 20, $20 or so. The bottle is very beautiful. Now I know the Kissa Pink is supposed to be the same as Yara. And it's supposed to be duping Yara because Yara got popular, so they were like, okay, let's ride the um, gravy train. <laughs> now, this guy, I liked it much, much, much better than the Caramel Cascade. And this one also is in the same category, but a different, uh, let's just say it took a different turn. Also, by the way, this one, you need to like let it sit for like 15 minutes. I'm not kidding. Not like few seconds, let the alcohol evap. No, you need to let it sit for 15 minutes before it can become strong. Now this one, what's the date of release? The good thing is the date of release is written so clearly. Also, March 2024. So they all were released like together in the same batch. Let me tell you the notes on, for this. None of these are on Fragrantica, by the way. So the Kissa Delicious notes are top notes of dark chocolate orange and whipped cream see it's so like the notes are so attractive that's why i was like i need to get this perfume dark chocolate with orange and dark chocolate with cherry is like one of my favorite combinations to eat and to wear <laughs> half notes of coconut marshmallow and jasmine and the base notes of vanilla softwoods and white musk killer 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 note composition i mean see like the perfume from the get-go, I'm liking it so much, but just like Yara, Yara Moa, that entire series, Yara 2's, you know how mild they were? You know how they lacked that power? This doesn't have any power. The same fragrance, if it was on a higher concentration, probably would have become like a viral perfume. Probably people have gone mental over it. They could have charged it a like a little bit more. Probably they could have like made it in a fancier, no, you don't even have to put it in a fancier bottle. Just like change the name a little bit, make it a little bit more of a premium collection. Instead of $20, make it like $35, people will still buy it. But make the, the perfume like much, much stronger. I feel the oil compositions on in this are like very, very mild. They're almost like a perfume mist, like the Bath & Body Works ones. You know how you have that uh, Victoria's Secret Bear Vanilla and then you have the Vanilla Sugar or something of um, Bath & Body Works. You know how weak the Bath & Body Works one is? The weakness of this perfume is that but the perfume itself is very very beautiful i really like it i mean i will even if it doesn't smell much i know i just still need to like have it somehow get it macerated more even if i have to douse myself in this i will and I'm, I'm loving this perfume one of the reasons why i am doing this video today is because i want to just like start using this on daily basis and just see how i feel it's very delicious would this be better in winter and uh, fall? Definitely. But I don't think I would mind wearing this in summer either because of that lightness of it. It's not thick. It is not uh, cloying. It's not overwhelming. I'm not saying that the, I'm not talking about the strength over here. I'm talking about the intensity of the perfume. It's not intense. So I can wear this in summer as well. It's a very mild, misty kind of fragrance. But I would like to smell delicious. I would like to smell like a snack and I'm going to wear this. Like This one for me is... For now, a 9 out of 10. I know it's a, it's a huge score. It's a 9 out of 10. I really like this fragrance. Compared to Caramel Cascade, like it was like a very welcome change. It was like a breath of fresh air. And I honestly think it's a very stunning perfume. It's a very beautiful fragrance, but it just needs to get more, more, more powerful. Now, because the production date is 03-2024, which is like, you know, I'm going to let it sit again for three months, which is why I told you these are my initial impressions. Don't after a few months when I change my mind, don't be like come for my neck or something. The next one is uh, Mahir. Now I had got this as a sample and I forgot about it. So the bottle looks something like that. But I have the sample size which Latafa sends samples to you when you make purchases on their website. And a lot of people have told, have told me to get the Mahir. Now this is the Mahir original. This is not the black one 
or the platinum one i know those two are there as well but they all lean very masculine which is why i did not opt for even reviewing those perfumes funny enough i like this perfume a lot it's very middle eastern middle easternness is like on like full 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 throttle it's on full volume blasting away this is attention grabber very incensey very 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 middle eastern with your rose with your oud all the jazz you know supposed to be duping more than words by zerjoff and rose d'arab by jojo armani on fragrantica it's got 3.92 which is like not bad at all it is still like a light perfume now it will be polarizing because it is definitely very very middle eastern leaning and it is definitely very very sweet middle eastern leaning the top notes for this are red berries peach and bergamot middle notes of jasmine peony and red lily and the base notes of sandalwood vanilla flower and musk well, you know what's funny is that they have not mentioned rose and they have not mentioned incense and they have not mentioned oud and from the get go that's what i'm smelling i'm smelling rose oud as an incense you know the incensey oud and the sweet oud as well like that's what i'm getting out of this yeah initially it does smell like the red berries the peach is there as like a slight powderiness and the bergamot is barely existing i don't know what it's doing there it's not adding any freshness nothing but maybe it's adding some form of greenness jasmine peony red lily i don't even know what red lily is to be honest with you but jasmine peony red lily out of all of this a peony is the one which is the dominating one it's quite powdery the floral form is very very powdery in this fragrance and the base notes of sandalwood vanilla musk i'm sure are there but besides this you also have for sure rose the dark one the red rose incense like crazy incense so strong the incense in this that it's unmistakable that's the first thing you notice when you sniff this perfume you're like incense you know and the oud also it's like the sweet oud extract the oil which is like the sweet oud it is quite powdery it is quite incensey i like it but like you know i have the sample size now i'm thinking like whenever i like a perfume i know it i'm smelling it i'm liking immediately i think will i put this on myself you know or will i like to smell this as an atmospheric scent or on somebody else you know or on a guy who i'm with or something i would not want ali to wear this no way and on myself as well probably like if i'm going to the mosque or something <laughs> so it is definitely a very church mosque very incensey fragrance now i don't know if this trend is still ongoing where people go for incensey scents but in my opinion like now we need to kind of like we need something different like incensey but it has to have some kind of edge i feel i mentioned this for most of the incensey fragrance if it has a little bit of tobacco it really makes a difference i know leather stop please stop putting leather in incensey fragrance i'm done with that you know but like a hint of like sweet tobacco it would change the fragrance so i would probably layer this with like a tobacco but will i get a bottle of this now despite of me liking it no why because i would rather have a candle or 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 a oud or like you know the bakhur or something that smells like this it dries down and becomes very mild it leans feminine although it's supposed to be a unisex fragrance and i think if i'm not mistaken this was advertised as a very masculine fra fragrance even the bottle and everything when you look at it you automatically assume that this is going to be a masculine scent but no it's quite feminine like in my opinion it's like so 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 feminine leaning like on a guy this is why i would not want ali to wear this it's sweet it's powdery it's incensey like it's going in a direction where like uh uh you know the good thing about this perfume which is why i liked the perfume is it doesn't have any kind of bitterness because when that powderiness combined with any kind of bitterness or any animalic notes like leather especially it would ruin the perfume it doesn't have any of that it would go into the that range of like that bottega veneta perfume if, if you know what i'm talking about right so i do like it it's very pretty but i'm going to use this as a room spray when guests are coming over because it does smell upscale it's not a bad perfume it's quite nice i know people will love it like you know if you like this kind of scents if you are into these kind of scents definitely fall winter no way you can wear this in summer unless you're wearing it in on an occasion or something even on an occasion like this lacks something that i would want to wear i would want myself to stand out when i'm going in a social setting this is not going to make me stand out i'm just going to smell very very nice so no this is like a 7.5 out of 10 it's a beautiful fragrance but I'm not going to put this on myself. I wouldn't want any of my loved ones to wear this either. But as an atmospheric scent, I would love to have this in my house. Somebody make this into a candle, please. <laughs> the projection is like a good 2 to 3 feet. Longevity of this perfume, by the way, is 
insane, seven to eight hours for sure, if not more. The Middle Eastern scale is like, you know, almost off the charts, you know, it's like going in that direction a lot. So yeah, this is definitely not a blind buy. You're gonna blind buy this perfume. If you don't like incensey fragrances, you're gonna hate this. If you don't like powdery, uh, heavy fragrances, you're not gonna like this at all. You're gonna be like, it's too cloying and everything. That's another thing. This perfume can get cloying very, very fast. So be careful. I like it. I like it, but I'm never gonna wear this. So, you know, I'm glad that they sent me the sample. I'm happy I tried it finally. Because as I said before, when I have not tried a perfume, if it's lurking around in my suggested perfumes, then I keep thinking about it. So these sample sizes that they send are very, very helpful. There are two more left in this haul. This is actually PR because it's come from Khadlaj. This was in my last month's PR and because I had traveled and because of Ramadan, all that, and because of the floods and everything, I had not filmed and this was like pending. This perfume has become like quite viral, by the way. Like I've been seeing people talk about it. I've been seeing it appear everywhere on TikTok and everything. I wanted to try it for myself because I was like, this is definitely going to be a summer fragrance the way like the notes are and everything. Okay, let me not keep you in suspense. This is Shiaka Gold. Shiaka Gold by Khadlaj is a feminine scent, supposedly. It's a fruity floral. Khadlaj's uh, fruity floral era is like going very strong, which is why I was excited about this perfume. But what was scary is that it better not be Herba Pure. <laughs> and it did not disappoint. It did not. This in UA is only $18, but I'm sure in your country it must be like $30 or so because of all the shipping charges and I know they have like logistic charges and everything. Like I did speak to a couple of brands like why does it happen? Why do you, why, the, why is the price so different from here to like elsewhere? And they told us and they told me that the logistics charges is quite a bit. It's not just the shipping charges. It's also storage. There's so many things going to it, which is why like the prices increase, but prices going double that's not normal you know now this one starts off like so so fruity and immediately i can smell pear like pear was the first note that came in mind it literally feels like i took a bite out of a pear and of late i've been eating the fruit pear a lot because it's high in fiber <laughs> and i saw a documentary on netflix and they were like you eat fiber and i'm like now trying to like eat artichoke and uh, broccoli and in fruits I'm like pear <laughs> pear is something that you, I usually don't eat unless it's like soft pear which is like juicy and nice but this is that crispy pear and the first note that you smell in this is that crispy pear the top notes for this are bergamot gardenia and musk middle notes of jasmine pear and peach and the base notes of amber and sandalwood think of gardenia and jasmine playing uh, playing the violin in the background <laughs> While all these fruity notes are like doing the dance in the front, you know, doing the, what's that, ballroom dance, I don't know what it's called, swing? No, it's not swing. Why am I so pathetic? Okay, I don't know. That thingy they do, the ball dance, ballroom dance. When I smelled this, I thought this was Prada Paradox meets uh, Gucci's The Gorgeous Gardenia, was it called? The, the Gardenia one, there are two of them, right? So the, the Gardenia one. I thought it was like a mixture of the two, but... The ultimate dry down was something like Bright Crystal by Versace. And that's when I was like, you know, because as the perfume progressed, I don't know, in my head it was like the Bright Crystal, Versace Bright Crystal, that was just popping up. But that Bright Crystal has this like chirpiness and very effervescent quality about it. This is more subtle in a way that literally like think of ballroom dancing, you know. And women wearing like, you know, those gowns and stuff and like twirling and going in like very synchronized circles <laughs> why am i born like this okay anyhow it's a very pleasant scent it's not bubbly it's not chirpy or anything and which is why i think i know why people like it the bottle looks like scary i'm not very fond of the bottle by the way it's pokey it is it looks like a very clubby kind of bottle also kind of gives you the vibe that this would be a masculine scent and i think shiaka was like all masculine fragrances so when I sprayed this, I was very shocked because I was like, first of all, I thought Shiaka was like a traditional range, you know, it's not. The perfume is very, very modern. Like literally think of like Prada Paradox, Gucci, Gorgeous, Gardenia and the uh, Versace Bright Crystal. All of that mixed together, this. I think out of all the Latafa fruity perfumes, Harimal Sultan aside, because that's like a different perfume, nothing, okay? 
this one probably will be the sub the one i'll be reaching the most i think i'm going to take this to the office as a matter of fact because i would want to smell like this always during the daytime in the office you know when i'm moving around when i'm active when i'm uh working like i don't want my perfume to disturb me but i want it to like be there supporting me and like smelling good and making me smell good and fresh all day i think it's a very very pretty fragrance by the way so if you like the pear note prominence but it's not so prominent that that's all you're going to smell right i'm just telling you that like the first impression you get is like pear you're not going to be like smelling this and be like what am i smelling no you'll be like oh i smell pear and then you'll start trying to analyze the perfume further i don't think this was meant to dupe anything but just like the the vibe i'm getting is all those three perfumes i told you before it's a combination of all three i would not even call this unisex it's feminine it's proper proper feminine for me this is a spring summer fragrance i don't think i would even touch it during winter it'll catch dust you know but because of its projection the projection is like maybe 2 feet if you overspray so this does require like a lot of sprays so i'll be spraying this a lot on myself the longevity as well i would say it's maximum 7 hours it's 6 to 7 hours it's one of those fragrances that you need to top up right my rating for this is 8.5 i quite like it and the more i use it i'm sure because again i don't know what the batch was for this i should have kept the box where is the box for this i don't know where i put the box so that is the box it's a very um normal box i'm trying to find the date okay so it's january 2024 so it is still new so i know this one again will macerate so i don't know what my rating will be later right now it's 8.5 i quite like it <sighs> now last but not the least and i saved this for the last because i wanted to give my proper attention to this i was very lucky to get this because this is not being given to influencers <laughs> i think they have not given this to any influencer i have not seen this with any influencers and i don't think i will because this is supposed to be one of their traditional perfumes original creations by like khadlaj by the uh, bushra's father and it took a lot of years for him to create and perfect this one there are two of them there was there, there's this one and there's another one which is called oud something i'll put the picture and everything over here this one is called mukhallat ma ward taiba okay i know it's a difficult name but let's just refer it to right now as taiba okay now first of all look at the box okay, look at the embellishment this is like all metal okay and then it opens like this okay put it the other way opens like that on the pedestal so pretty and then the bottle is like oh, oh my gosh look at the oh my word it is so heavy by the way it is so heavy i don't know if it is a marble or what because it definitely does not feel like glass it feels like it's made out of some kind of precious stone i'm pretty certain this is marble but marble does it chip very fast no no i don't know i'll check i'll check and i'll let you guys know if this is actually marble it's only 12 ml the oil is only 12 ml in this and the price for this is 280 dirhams i'm going to put it in dollars for you guys oh my god it's so precious that i don't want to use <laughs> no, no i will use it on my skin because oils better that you use it on your skin you use a little bit of this in the morning like for example like that rub it rub it behind your ears on the boobs <laughs> everywhere you know like on your wrist between your you know wherever like you know uh, between your behind your knees on between your knees behind your knees and everything you're going to smell of this perfume all day now first of all what is mukhallat i'm sure you've seen the word mukhallat like everywhere mukhallat is basically like a mixture of five ingredients in the middle east and the actual literal meaning of the word mukhallat is blends so when people it's a blend mukhallat is blend and then when you say khaltat which is like the plural of mukhallat khaltat which you must have heard even the khaltat royal blends for example that's blends so that's like mukhallat with stuff this again mukhallat is like the original mukhallat and then it has like additional notes to it now mukhallat is something which is like very 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 common in the ua okay not only in the ua in the entire gcc this is the og mukhallat combinations that you get in the marketplace unbranded people mix it for you there and then give it to you and 
the most common thing that you'll smell is a mukhalat. Now, mukhalat is very dated, very, very dated. So what Khadlaj decided to do, they made a modern take on the mukhalat. Let me get the notes out of the way so that you can imagine what I'm talking about. The top notes are aromatic spices, caramel, bergamot, and mandarin. Now, these notes usually are not present in, you got that right, mukhalat. Mukhalat like, would go in the base notes, I suppose. Middle notes of Damascus rose. Rose is something that is mandatory, you know, the combination of the five notes. Ylang ylang and jasmine. Jasmine, again, like it's, it goes in normally all the mukhalats, but I don't know if it's like a mandatory thing. Ylang ylang is not usually like a common thing to put in a mukhalat. Then you have the base notes of oud, which is mandatory. Amber, which is mandatory. <laughs> uh, the moss, which is mandatory. Then you have the musk, of course, which is mandatory. And then you have in this, the additional thing that you have is creamy vanilla and aged leather. It is strong. It is your typical mukhalla, typical Middle Eastern blend of perfume, which you would get from markets in oil forms, usually modernized, adding some fresh notes to it, adding some spices and adding that caramel and vanilla sweetness. There are pigeons everywhere. I don't know why. But this fragrance, it's so intoxicating. It is literally, I would want to wear this like you know on, in our wedding usually we have like this traditional day which is like where you get married you know and then you have your valima which is like the next day where you are like by <laughs> parents and you <laughs> some people do it together but like in our culture we do it like two separate days and then your consummation of the marriage is on the second day which is the uh valima i would want to wear this on a uh, valima like I would want people to wear this on the Walima, wear this perfume, do the bakhur on yourself. You will smell like a queen. You will smell like modern day queen, elevated. Nobody else will smell like you. You will be like the dominant fragrance everywhere else. This is not your white dress <laughs> fragrance for a wedding, you know. It is not your like looking ethereal or like that. This is like looking like a proper Middle Eastern bride that you deserve to be. Even for that matter, Indian subcontinent, where you wear these heavy clothes, the heavy jewelry, heavy dress, you would want to smell like this. This for me is going to be like a very traditional scent that I would want to wear during Eid or on, during events as well, where I want to make my mark, where I want to make an impression. I usually like wear abayas and stuff. By the way, today my abaya has like moons on it. I don't know if you noticed or not. It's very cute. Like usually when I go for events and stuff, I would want to wear a perfume or a perfume oil or a combination of both but the mandatory thing for me is to do bakhur like i would want my hair to be bakhur my body to be bakhur my clothes to be bakhur because when you do bakhur and when you go out in events and stuff you're going to stand out you're going to be like where every time you pass people can smell your trail for hours <laughs> like through and through if i walk like 10 kilometers the whole 10 kilometers will be like smelling of me you know so wearing this perfume and then wearing a bakhur on top of this especially if it's like a Wood sticks or something like that. Oh my god, it's gonna be like insane. This one is like a baby that I will preserve. This one is slightly expensive. It's 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 280 dirhams. Still, I'm telling you the price for this. 280 dirhams is like nothing in UA for a quality and like the kind of oil this is, the quality of it, the ingredients that are used in this. They have used best of the best ingredients in this oil, and that is why probably one of the priciest things on the Khadlaj website. Probably the second highest, you know, the Oud one is like slightly more higher than this. I am obsessed. I am obsessed. Obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. Like from the traditional uh, oils, this one is my favorite. Just because of um, the modernness of the Mukhallat, not anything else. I'm not just saying that it's very good ingredient, so I love it. There are many, 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 even unbranded oils that you get in the Middle East that smell really good, they smell really strong, but they're very, very traditional. And because we have smelled it all our life, we take it for granted and we don't like really like actually go buy it and wear it. You know, nobody does that anymore. It's usually the tourists and everybody who come and then they buy these perfumes. But this one, that modern take on it with the vanilla, caramel and everything, the freshness, the spicy, uh, earthiness and everything is just, just very gorgeous. So that's why this has become like my... This is 10 out of 10. Did I say that? Yeah, 10 out of 10 this one for me. Middle Eastern vibe is like high in this. Unisex for sure. 
it doesn't lean masculine or feminine it'll adapt if you wear it with your skin also because you wear it on your skin it changes like if ali wears this it smells much much more masculine on him because the oud and the earthiness like really really comes out on his skin on me not so much like on me i feel like yeah the oud is like quite pleasant the musk has become quite strong which is why i'm sensitive to musk but in this the musk is like a very modern musk the ones i the one i tell you khadla uses right and then the florals and everything is there so for me it's like a pro proper blend on ali it just turns very very masculine I really like this perfume i love it so that's it guys these were all my first impressions except for i guess for this one it cannot be it's an oil okay it cannot like be it will still change and macerate and with age it will probably get a little sweeter a little bit more uh you know concentrated but like i can't imagine this getting any more stronger than it already is so this is like not first impressions the rest of them yes they are so i hope you liked it the only reason i wanted to share this with you guys because a lot of you all are asking me for these perfumes and plus like i was also pretty intrigued with the notes and everything gourmand you know it's like my baby <laughs> gourmand is like my territory you know if i ever make a perfume my own the first one that will go out will be a gourmand <laughs> second one probably a middle eastern one and the third one would be a freshy but what i would consider it a good fresh perfume to be like let's see let's see that's for future i'm putting it out and i'm manifesting like navitu so if you're listening to me <laughs> i'm such an idiot uh anyhow guys that's it for today and i hope you enjoyed this video and uh keep telling me the no the perfumes that you want me to review because i'm taking them like making notes of it and i'm going through them one by one yeah and i think i'm going to very soon have a declutter video as well i know it's too soon because i'm no actually it's not too soon june july wait july is the month that i do declutters january no wait it's june <laughs> June is the month I do all the declutters so it's December and June I might post it in July but uh, I'll have a declutter video very very soon for you guys as well it's the most interesting thing for me because you know why when things are catching dust I don't like it I just feel it brings negative energy into the house and everything secondly you know you just feel bad that you spend money on these perfumes thirdly I'll get more money to buy new perfumes so I need to do the declutter very very fast That's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.